Okay, this one I think is going to be quicker. This is a design doctor for the Haze Ranger. Again, from Sebastian Crow's Guide to Dragonheim. So, last time we talked about the Malfezen Wizard, we talked a little bit about uh, horizontal versus vertical progression. Horizontal progression being you gain new cool new powers, while vertical progression is just when the numbers get higher. And so, uh, here I want to relate design to something like a three-course meal. So if you go to a Mexican restaurant, like the Mexican restaurants I like, they're going to bring you out your, your chips and salsa or chips and guacamole. You're going to have some appetizer. Then you're going to have the main course, and you're going to wash it down with, with something nice. you got uh, a, a sequence of things, each of them unique, but the, they blend one into another. And I think a good subclass design is going to look like that. It's got several different abilities, but they go well together, and they also move uh, in a in a proper sequence, right? You wouldn't lead off your dinner um, with uh, with your what, what the heck is this? This is some kind of lime <laughs> lime. Oh, what do they call it? Whatever. Uh, just cut this part out. Uh, so when we look at the Valfezan Wizard, they're just a big pile of chips. Yeah, you want you, you're good at c casting contaminated spells, and uh, you're just really good at casting those contaminated spells, and you're still good at casting those contaminated spells. It's just a big bag of chips. While the Haze Ranger Barbarian feels like a bunch of side dishes that aren't really correctly unified. So this would be like having Indian curry and Brazilian feijoada and fajitas. And um, all these together, uh, each of these on their own are, are pretty good, but uh, imagine three side dishes and they're like, this is your meal. Um, they don't really go well together as much as you would want them to. So when we're looking at the Haze Ranger Barbarian, the concept behind them is a little strange. Um, I think the the generalized gist of it is that they have been in the haze and they've kind of absorbed some sort of that haze power into their own bodies and they can unleash it at certain times. And I think the, the main touchstone here would be the Incredible Hulk, right? That he absorbed all that gamma radiation, but it, it kind of hides under the skin. But it comes out when he needs to fight. Um, there are a lot of kind of contaminated warriors that we kind of see in fiction. Um, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, in, in, in this we have Bane, where he's going to charge himself up. Um, but I, I don't know if this is that big of a, a departure from the base barbarian. So we're bringing in haze elements. So you would probably want something like this, this chaos orc over here, where you're incorporating mutation, you're incorporating um, weird delirium-related stuff to the base class. Um, and we're going to see how they present it. So again, as I always do, here is the entirety of the subclass. So feel free to review it if you like, but we're going to go through it one step at a time here. So one thing that I keep going back to is uh, let's present a coherent playstyle. When you give your player a subclass, uh, of course, the class itself will probably already present a pretty good approximation of, of uh, what you expect to be doing. So for instance, any cleric, doesn't really matter your subclass, you can kind of expect them to um, cast spiritual weapon. Once they get to third level, they're going to cast Spear Guardians. Once they get to fifth level, they're going to use. In, they're going to be a, a mid to front liner, so they, they might stay a little back, but mostly they'll be on the front lines because they got that good armor proficiency, um, and they're going to be able to keep their allies up with healing spells, and they're going to use their other spells to uh, harass or the the opponents or buff the allies, and that, that kind of, that's and then you would hope for in the base class it would it would teach you something new that you're doing. So for like a light cleric, it gives you fireball. It's like okay, so now you're a good blaster. It presents a coherent play style. And uh, one thing that we're going to see for for this barbarian in uh, the Haze Ranger in particular, um, if we had to do a quick summary of it, these are all its abilities here. At first level, you're going to get 1d8 bonus necrotic damage. It's once per turn, so it's not like um, you would even benefit from uh, making more attacks. It's just a once per turn thing, so okay. Uh, at sixth level, you're going to get four resistances. Um, those are just always on. They're not when you're raging or anything. Um, you're going to get some abilities that let you ignore the, the problems that are associated with contamination. Okay, fine, because some abilities of yours do give you contamination, so this is kind of a trade-off here. Um, at higher levels... Uh, at 6th level, um, and then at 10th level, they're going to get abilities to cast some spells. So Purge Contamination, but only on other people, Gaseous Form, and Contact Other Plane. This gives some utility. Um, these are some utility features. And then at 12th, uh, or sorry, 14th level, they get Haze Aura, which is kind of similar to Spirit Guardians. Um, and when I see all these, I'm like, what is this subclass? Uh, as far as uh, building a coherent playstyle, what, I mean, it's got some abilities that kind of go along with the flavor, but it's not really building 
a subclass. It feels, like I said, it, it feels like uh, you have three different side dishes that are all just kind of side by side with each other that don't really go well together. There's not really any features that build on each other or affect the play style. And what is the flavor of story? You'd think that you'd have something like um, Bruce Banner, the Hulk. Now, maybe that's already been done. It's been done to death. You know, they did it in Grim Hollow. Um, it exists in some form already in the Base Barbarian class. I think there was a recent, um, somebody was telling me about a recent one where they, it was called The Experiment, so it's kind of like somebody who's been experimented on, maybe like Wolverine or, I don't know, the Hulk. Um, and again, this has another problem with uh, contamination, which it ignores the effects of contamination rather than um, interacting with the system. Now, if you are going to give yourself contamination, then I guess uh, ignoring it is a good trade-off, uh, but... At the same time, this just doesn't really give you a, a great dynamic to be working with um, contamination as, compo as compared to, say, other subclasses. So if we're just going to go over them more specifically, you can see that at level 3, you get this 1d8 per turn. You can also um, do a little contaminated smite, so you can gain a level of contamination and uh, do 2d8 extra damage. Uh, now, this is kind of a cool trick. I mean, 1d8 is a good little boost, and it boosts up to 10, uh, 2d8 at 10th level, and 3d8 at 14th level. So this Barbarian is bringing the pain. Like, it's got the power that you want. But that's not really affecting your playstyle. I mean, it's necrotic damage, so... Uh, but it, it, it says weapon attacks... Oh, crud. Um, looks like I had a typo here uh, with one of your weapon attacks, unarmed strikes. So they want weapon attacks or unarmed strikes. But, uh, yeah, this, this isn't really a place... I mean, I guess there is the question of do you um, smite immediately once you get in? Um, and, that, you know, that, that, that might, that's probably the most effective way. The, the sooner you deal damage, the, the, the better it is. Uh, a lot of damage later in, in, um, later in, in a combat is, is worth a lot less than a lot of damage early in the combat. And the last thing here, uh, inert corruption... Um, is normally when you cast Purge Contamination, you remove all the contamination, those turn into exhaustion. Because this guy's probably taken a bunch of contamination with Contaminated Fury and maybe with some later abilities, um, then this is just a good way that uh, you're, you're not going to be exhausted. But because this is encouraging you to take care of to, to take on contamination, you're actually, um, you're, you're actually asking your party to give up more um, because they're going to have to spend money and spell slots to cast Purge Contamination on you just to use your feature. Now, you, you do have this decent base boost here, but if you want to smite, um, you know, it's not going to cost you anything immediately, but eventually it's going to cost the party, which, uh, that's fair enough design. Uh, it does feel a little bad, though. Um, so at 6th level, you get 4 resistances. They're just always on. Um, I don't think there's any other feature in the game that is that is this strong. Even um, uh, Bear, Bear Totem Barbarian, uh, that's only while you're raging. So if for some reason you can't rage, then, then you don't have those. Now, to be fair, they're Necrotic, Poison, Psychic, and Radiant, so um, those aren't as common as, say, Fire or Poison. But they still come up a, a, a good amount. And your HP maximum can't be reduced. I consider that practically a flavor feature. Hardly any features in the game do that. And when they do, usually they've doesn't really matter that much. Um, and at 6th level, again, we're ignoring symptoms of contamination, and uh, you do get better choice on mutations, so that is marginally an okay feature. Uh, we talked a little bit about mutations in the Malfazent Wizard, but just whenever you gain a level of contamination, you're going to roll d6, and if you roll equal to or lower than your level of contamination, then you mutate. Mutates are, mutations are almost always beneficial, and so this will just give you a, a better pick. It, it means you're more likely to get something that's actually decent and, and useful. And at 10th level, you can cast Purge Contamination. Now, this does kind of make up for the uh, effect, for the fact that um, you've kind of forced other players to cast Purge Contamination on you just to just to use your feature. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, maybe you should have just been able to, to do this on yourself at some point. Um, uh, a lot early. This is 10th level. You know, you've already you're all, you're probably already you know 70 percent, 80 percent through Draconheim at this point. And 10th level voices in your head. You get to cast Contact the other plane. And instead of being driven mad, you can get contamination instead. These these are utility features, certainly, but it's it's utility. Like th this isn't um, a playstyle that that you've kind of built. This is just kind of features that are just kind of side by side that don't really interact one with another. Um, it, they're just kind of there. And at uh, 14th level, you get to cast gaseous form on yourself. Another utility feature. And the aura, which will be similar to uh, spirit guardians in that it's three day damage and um, uh, their speeds are halved. 
Um, and it's also no no friendly fire. So this is basically just always on Spirit Guardians, which is, again, strong. But um, what, once you put them all together, it just feels like this weird collection of, that's, that's just spread across several different levels. Um, and that's 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 the main that would be my main complaint with the subclass is the power there Yeah, yeah, it's powerful enough um, But where's the build? You know, it's just a regular build just like any barbarian You're gonna grab polar master at fourth level You're gonna grab great weapon master at eighth level or if you're a varian human You'll grab polar master right at first level and great weapon master at fourth and You're just gonna attack a bunch and deal a bunch of damage and tank a bunch of damage and then you've got some utility features to kind of help you out but uh I don't feel like you've uh, built anything groundbreaking here. So how would I fix this? Honestly, um, these are some cool flavor features, but uh, as far as building a coherent design, I really don't know. I'm kind of like this this big orc guy right here. I'm just kind of confused. I don't. I, you'd have to start somewhere from the ground up. The fact that there's so many spells, I'm tempted to um, just make a singular feature that scales. So, for instance, right at third level, you'll get something that's like, oh, you know, you know, as you reach certain levels in this class, you'll you can cast one of these spells once per day and then you'd have like a smite spell at first level and then you'd have purge contamination at sixth level and then you'd have a gaseous form at 10th or contact other plane at 10th level and a gaseous form at, at 14th level and, or something like that and uh you, you probably like i said you probably want to uh, build something that tells a story and has a coherent play style so maybe some penalties maybe some maybe when you rage you mutate for that rage like that would be kind of a cool feature uh, and it lends itself to the randomness and, and mutation of um the setting uh yeah so yeah that's that's a haze rager you ju it just this is uh a, a case of design where you need a bit more focus you need a bit more direction